Uh, yeah, today's seven. Um, you know, and we're still trying to figure out exactly, um, you know, spring game format, how we'll do that. So, but we'll really, we've got truly seven more practices to go um, with some scrimmages involved, you know. But we're, we're trying to avoid just go to scrimmage the entire practice and we're trying to find scrimmage portions and still continue to teach. And so I think that's been effective so far. Um, but yeah, about halfway. How would you uh, rate your defensive backfield right now? Um, well, I think, I think what's good is, you know, we have some guys that have moved to some different spots, right? Um, Keaton Crawford is playing safety. Um, you know, Anthony Cook is playing safety now and not so much nickel. Jade Barron is kind of in base defense playing corner, but then playing star. Um, so I like the, the progression that we're at mm -hmm. in those spots, you know, with those guys kind of moving in. I, I like the addition of Ryan Watts right now. Um, you know, I, I like the uh, competitive, competitiveness of our younger players, you know, you know Gilbo, Terrence Brooks. I thought Jameer Johnson now that, that he's kind of back full health going has, has shown some things. Um, and I, the, the two young safeties show some things, I think B.J. Allen. So the, the key, like I was talking to players about out there on the field afterwards, you know, this time of year in spring practice it should be about growth, right? Every time we take the field, we should be trying to grow to, be, to improve as a player. And, you know, are we doing the necessary things, whether it's fundamentally taking the extra time to study, um, so that we don't make the same mistakes over and over. And if we can do that and minimize the mistakes, that, that's the growth. And as we grow individually, we'll grow collectively as a team. And I think for the most part, we've done that. Um, but that's, that's, this is the time of year for all that. And so at the halfway point, um, with that group in the back end, uh, I'm seeing the growth. Now, naturally, as new coverages go in, um, as new route concepts go in, um, you know, it can feel sometimes like, oh, man, we had a tough day today back there. But hopefully the next practice, when we call those same coverages, uh, we play them better. And so I think that that's, that's been the, the part for me that's been encouraging. Is Ryan the best cover guy, you think? Uh, it's tough, tough to call. You know, he's different, you know, yeah. because of the length. You know, I mean, uh, when, he can, when he can press you and get his hands on you, um, you know, it's, it's very different than, than like DJ, um, who can play, you know, kind of – top down because of the speed and the, and the change of direction. So it's all who, what style of player are you and then playing to your strengths as a player. And I think that that's something uh, we've tried to emphasize to those guys in the back end. The coach education at safety is huge, obviously. And Cook is, you know, teammates have said he's got to get to be more vocal. Are you seeing that? Or is Keaton, how would you describe their? Well, I think naturally, you know, when you play corner, you don't have to communicate that much. You kind of get told what to do. When you play star, you kind of get told a lot of the times what to do. So sometimes, you know, giving people the opportunity to be vocal, you find out they're probably maybe a little more vocal than they, than they might be. And I think both those guys have communicated well. Um, I think Coach Gideon has done a really good job, uh, obviously with his experience and expertise at the position of, of, of helping them with that. Um, and and making sure that we're all on the same page, you know, because the, the last thing we want is one guy's calling one thing and another guy's calling another. So um, I think that they've done a good job. Um, again, Cook has played a lot of football, so he's seen a lot of football, and so I think it comes really, really natural to him. I think the perspective of the game for Keaton, it, what I've been impressed with, it, it's grown, it's improved, because it's a lot different perspective when you're 10 yards, 12 yards deep in the middle of the field as opposed to, be impressed on a receiver and you're just focused on what's right in front of you. But I think he's done a good job of opening his vision. Um, and the thing that Rakeaton makes up for it, he's just a, he's a very explosive player. He can run, he's physical, um, so that, that's been helpful. Coach, did uh, Jaden Hullaby move from linebacker to linebacker? Yeah, we, we're, we moved him to running back today, um, and we're going to do that here for the kind of for the interim. Um, I want to see what that looks like. You know, he's a big physical athlete um, that, uh, you know, in our system, the, the, the running back position is critical. And if we can find another guy, kind of, he's built a little bit like Roshan that way, um, that could maybe develop into that role, um, we'll see. I know that I mean, it's his first day, but are you trying to put him there kind of as like a traditional running back or maybe have him in some different roles that you know, could be, you 
even not just traditional running back, I guess. Could there be other roles in the offense, kind of pseudo tight end like stuff that he could do? Today he was a running back. Well, gotcha. Yeah. Are there, are there, how much in the league uh, gets to participate? I know he's on the throw. Yeah, very limited. Um, he's on the kind of the, the trajectory that we thought he'd be on. You know, he was out uh, essentially for six practices, and now we hit practice seven, uh, and he's able to throw kind of routes on air, um, you know, not, not throwing anything with anybody around him. Hopefully, you know, come Thursday we can graduate kind of into some seven-on-seven seven type settings. Um, but, again, uh, I don't want to rush him. He did some nice things today. Um, you know, it's one thing to sit in meetings and to stand and watch plays develop. It's another when you actually have to operate him. Uh, but you could tell he's putting in the time, putting in the work and the, and the effort. Um, so he got a natural delivery. Um, he's got a good feel uh, for th passing the football. Um, we always say quarterbacks pass the ball, they don't throw it, right? Um, and he's got, a nice, he's got a nice feel for passing the ball. Andre Carrick and Jalen Garth, it seems like this is a golden opportunity for them, especially right now before the six newcomers come yeah. in. Can you talk about what you'd like to see from them or just how big an opportunity this is? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for all these guys, I mean, they're getting a, a lot of valuable reps. Um, you know, we, we just don't, like we said at Ignazium, we, we don't have the depth up there right now that we would like. So they're getting a lot of reps. Um, they're getting to move around. I think Coach Flood has done a nice job of, of moving them around and, and trying to find um, some flexibility for all these guys. Um, and I think for Andre and for Jalen, you know, Andre's got a little bit more experience than Jalen's had. And, but I'd say Jalen is probably one of the guys coming out of winter conditioning that really maximized that eight weeks. Uh, I thought he really changed his body and has done some really positive things up front. I think Andre, again, has a lot of the tools, has the mindset. Um, but for both guys, like a lot of young players, it's about consistency, right? Um, can you consistently... Uh, do what you're asked to do, and then, and then, like we talked about earlier, can you learn from your mistakes and then grow and get better for the next time that we go out? Um, and that's that's the challenge for young players to earn the trust. You know, what they're doing right now is trying to earn trust of their coaches that we can that we can count on you and we can count on you at critical moments. And I think they've both done a good job. Um, I think they would tell you, and I'll tell you, I think we would love for them to continue to, to get better and to play better. Uh, we're going to need that. Um, but I, I like the kind of the, the focus and the intent that they're bringing every day. What's, the, what's your strongest offensive line? Um, just brute strength. Yeah. Probably have to ask Tory Becton that. I would say Junior's probably right there. He loves to lift. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know. I, you know. Just off the top of my head. Yes, yeah, Steve. Uh, Marcus Washington had a few productive games for y'all in the yeah. back half last year. Just curious, you know, what do you see his role as this year, and where does he need to grow yeah. this offseason? I think Marcus. Uh, you know, one of one thing I love about him, he loves football, and that guy plays hard. And I know you guys don't ever like to talk about it, but special teams wise, that guy was a tremendous player for us. Um, early on in the year, he created a lot of value for himself, a on special teams, and b kind of as a blocker in the run game and on the perimeter stuff. And his commitment to doing that, that's not always the sexiest thing to do when you're a receiver. Uh, but by doing that, he kind of earned our trust to, to do more and to play more. And, you know, when we lost Jordan um, in OU, he kind of stepped in and he was comfortable in the slot and he was comfortable outside and he made some big plays for us. Um, you know, like anything for Marcus, for him to grow and take it to the next level. And I, and I know I say this a lot, but consistency, right? Consistency, catching the ball, um, being where you're supposed to be. Um, you know, maybe not not taking some penalties, you know, because he's so aggressive. You know, we got a couple holding penalties on the perimeter. So all those things of just the consistency of, of playing with the effort that he can play with, but then making his play when the opportunity comes. And so uh, that's drill work, that's ball work, that's fundamentals, that's technique. But it's never about the want to with Marcus, man. His intent, he brings it every day. Um, and it shows, and I, I think he's earned a lot of respect of his teammates by the way he attacks special teams and attacks kind of the dirty work at the receiver position, not just catching the go balls and the touchdowns and things like that. Staying with special teams, your assessment of your kicking and punting situation. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's new. You know, it's new for all of us uh, not having Dicker. Um, and, and so Isaac, I think, has you know, really kind of progressively gotten better as we've gone through spring. Um, 
I think I think Bert Auburn and, and Lozano have, have done a nice job. You know, we're really just starting to we just started field goals last week. We just were j just getting into the, kind of the kickoff phase of it all. They both got nice legs. I think Zach Edwards has done a nice job snapping. Um, but but with that, with the kicking game, as much as it is about effort, you know, it's about the fundamentals, the techniques, and and being where you're supposed to be. That's why we invest a lot of time in it. Um, I thought it was an advantage for us a year ago in a lot of games, and I think it will continue to be uh, with the investment that we make and the coaches that we have and the people on our mm -hmm. roster. Um, but we've got a lot of work to do in that phase. You know, we've, we've got a long way to go. What's, as an offensive guy, what's the biggest challenge about going against odd fronts and with y'all's personnel on defense? Do you think that's something y'all could lean on a bunch this year? Yeah, I think odd fronts, a couple things. If they're a traditional odd, you know, when, when – the three down linemen can really anchor the front um, and they can really two gap you. Um, they can muddy up things on the interior and then that ball then naturally kind of gets spilled to your edge players, your backers, your safeties. And, you know, our guys have the capability of doing it. We, we've got some big humans obviously inside with Coburn and Sweat and Alford and Vernon and Morrow. And, and there's, a, there's a lot of good players. We have some good young players, you know. Uh, Aaron Bryant's looked like a good player so far. Um, Dre Bledsoe. So that, that can make it difficult is when you can't move the big guys in an odd front, um, it's hard to create running lanes. And so I, I think it'll be good for us um, as we grow uh, into the fall. Um, but we have to block it, you know, because we're going to see plenty of odd fronts as the season comes around. And then for your, do you think that's something you'll lean on with the defense, considering kind of some inexperience at edge, but experience in all those interiors? Yeah, I mean, I think, it, you know, every game week to week, you, our goal is to stop the opponent and what they do best. Um, and, you know, one way to do that is to lean on what you do best, and it's another to make sure that you've got enough variation so that, we're not just sitting targets, you know, and then they scheme us up. So you got to be multiple enough, um, but ultimately you got to lean on what you're what you're really good at and what you're best at. Right now, I'd say that front is very good to us, but that doesn't mean we're not effective in a four down front either. But that front has been good to us so far. What are you seeing from Baron Sorrell and and from Justice Finkley? Yeah, I, I see two kind of younger players that. Um, Flash at times, show some physicality at times. Um, you know, I think there's maybe a little hesitation in both of their games right now. Um, understandably so, um, seven practices in. But I'm seeing, I think, incremental growth, um, which is which is positive. But we got a long way to go with those two guys and at, at that position just in general of really cutting it loose and playing the, the style of football that we want to play. Um, you know, I think you see a difference when, when Ovi kind of plays that same spot. It feels and looks a little different right now than, than Justin's, Justice or Sorrell. Uh, I think they'll get there. They're both very conscientious kids. They work hard. They, you know, take really good notes. They, they do the extra work. They, they work hard in the weight room. So I think it's going to come. It's just how fast can we get there for them. Anybody separating in the first seven practices, really making a move to become a starter or become the, maybe the first one? off the bench. Anybody at what position? Anybody just jumps out at you that, well, they're, you're noticing them and their position coaches are noticing them. Um, wow. Uh, you know, I would say our, our three frontline backs have all played well, Bijan, Roshan, and Keelan. I think Keelan has done a nice job. Um, you know, I would say Jordan Whittington has, has really put himself in position, has played really good football. You know, he was playing really well for us through the first four games a year ago. I didn't think he played great when he got back. And I, and I understand, you break a collarbone, you come back at the end of the year. I, it didn't feel like the same kid we had at the beginning of the season. Uh, but I think Jordan has um, really invested in himself kind of physically and mentally all off season long. And it is showing right now in spring practice. You know, I think he's in great condition. He's making a lot of plays. He's being a versatile guy. Um, I would probably say he's been kind of the highlight of, of what we got going. You know, clearly X is, is playing really good football. Um, and we got a great competition at tight end. So on that front, it's been good. I think DeMarvion has looked really good um, at linebackers, playing fast. And Jalen Ford um, seems like a different player right now. Uh, we're not finished products, but he seems like a different player. Speaking of linebacker, um, 
with all of you going to running back, obviously there's some comfort. I mean, what are you seeing in terms of your, you know, obviously DeMar being it, offside, but that middle linebacker position? Yeah, I think Jalen, again, he's really asserted himself. It feels very comfortable with him out there. He's another guy that sometimes, you know, I think a lot of people have thought he's not a really vocal guy until all of a sudden now he's in a role to be vocal, to make those calls up front, um, you know, to change fronts and different things. And um, I, I like his energy. I like where he's kind of grown to as a leader. Um, I think David Benda is a versatile guy. I think Devin Richards is a very smart guy. And I think Jet Bush is, you know, we've really committed him to that position and not trying to juggle him back and forth from edge and back and forth. And I think his commitment there has shown up. You know, he's a really good player against the run. What have you seen from, you know, at least the, the top your quarterbacks yeah. so far? Uh, they're, they're playing well. Um, I think both those guys have natural ability to, to, to throw the ball. Um, they've got a good feel um, for coverages and, and kind of trajectory on balls and where to throw them. You know, I think they would both tell you, you know, I always tell them, you know, one play doesn't define your practice, you know, and naturally things happen. You miss a throw or, you, you, you know, you miss a read, and sometimes that can wear on you as a quarterback. You know, this isn't – one throw is not going to, you know, define who the starter is. You know, we're, we're a work in progress. Um, but they're doing some nice things, and I think the one thing that I appreciate about both of them, they're both really coachable guys. And, you know, you guys know I, I coach that position hard. Um, it, it's, it's, you know, it's most important position in sports, and we need them to operate at a certain level. And both guys have taken to the coaching and are really trying to apply the things that we're coaching them to do. And, um, you know, th th there's, there's always things for us to improve mm -hmm. upon there with those guys. And, you know, they're at different stages. They're in a different mold. But I, the one thing which we talked to them about before spring ball started, focus on what you need to do and where, where you're trying to improve your game, not not worrying about what the other guy is doing. And I think they've done that. And I think they've been really supportive of one another. And yeah, I've seen growth for sure, you know, but but we're not a finished product. I always want them to get better. Hudson, you know, with his this being his second year in the offense, it would seem like he'd be more comfortable with what you're calling and all the calls and everything. Is that fair or how would you assess it? No, I think so. I mean, that's natural. You know, he got a spring, a fall camp, and a season, right? And Quinn has gotten, you know, winter conditioning, and now he's in just finished practice number seven. Um, but with that, the way we install, you know, they can really focus on just what we're doing today. They don't have to know everything that this offense is, can be, or has ever done. They need to focus on what we install for the day. And then we go to the next day, they need to focus on what we're doing today and that previous day. And that's how we kind of build. And so, um, you know, I, I think when we can compartmentalize it that way, it makes it a little easier on Quinn of just focusing on what we're doing for the day and not everything all at once. But it also allows Hudson to say, yes, I know what we're doing today, but here's kind of, kind of some of the auxiliary things off of that that he can kind of start thinking of where we might be going. His, his pocket presence, Hudson, you know, a lot of young quarterbacks struggle with that. Sure. Sam Ellinger struggled with it. Sure. Are you see, and it's hard to tell, obviously, in practice where you're not hitting the quarterback, yeah. but how can you tell? Well, I think, it's, I think it's a feel. Um, I think, you know, there's a feel to watch their feet. I think there's a feel of watching their eyes. You know, are they, are they dropping their eyes and looking at the rush, or are they keeping their vision as the ball coming out on time? even when there's a presence coming free in their face. And, you know, we talk a lot about contact courage. And, you know, when I say contact courage, most people think a receiver going over the middle, making a tough catch, or running back on the sidelines. Um, but the quarterback has to have contact courage too. You know, I'm standing here and the three technique beats the guard and here comes a 300 pound guy right in my face. And I'm asking him to stand right there and deliver the ball and take that hit. Uh, that takes courage. Um, but sometimes it takes taking that hit to learn, hey, I got up, you know, I'm okay. And I think that's what the great ones have. And then they also have the natural feel of the timing's not right. He's not ready. I need to feel that color and avoid it. And I may have to avoid it to go to my next read. I may have to avoid it to escape. There's a lot of feel in that. And the only way you get that is through repetition and, and taking those reps and doing it. And 
Uh, it's been a point of emphasis for us with him. But I don't want to take away from him, though, he is a really good athlete. And Hudson's legs are a weapon for him. And I know we don't call a lot of design runs for our quarterbacks, but third down, red area, different times of the game, man coverage, when he can escape and use his legs, they're a weapon for us. And so I don't want to take that stinger from him either. So um, it's, a, it's a fine line, you know, and, and it's, we're just trying to educate on every play of here's, here's this opportunity to do this and here's an opportunity to do, to do that, you know, play in and play out. Are you, are you planning the next two Saturdays to be a scrimmage and then the spring game? That there'll Saturdays? be there'll be portions of it, yes. Of it. Yeah. Do you? How, how are you and the staff doing it? You've mentioned about you wanted to create, I guess, pressure situations to increase or help improve their closing time. Yeah. Really. You know, how, how's that? I mean, going? it's been good. You know, we did it. We did it today. Um, you know, we worked uh, end of the half scenarios um, there. You know, you know, you know, two different reps with the ones versus ones and twos versus twos, and tried to get guys in critical situations and and really talking about poise and composure uh, in those critical moments and and not becoming frantic. And, you know, I think that when you get frantic, that's when mistakes occur. You know, fundamentals and technique get lost. Um, scheme can falter uh, because of lack of communication. So we're really trying to, you know, talk about poise and composure and focus and, and not um, – focusing on what the outcome could be and just focus on where we're at right now, and that's that next play. And I think they, they, the guys are really starting to understand it. Steve, in your secondary, what's the one thing that aggravated you most last year? Do you want less pass interference penalties, better tackling, better press coverage? What area do you want to see? Um, I would probably say two things. I'd say one, I don't, I don't – less – Easy completions, you know. I want to. I want to be tighter. I, I, we. I want us to make it difficult on our opponent uh, when they go to throw the ball, and it's a two-way street. You know, you can play tighter coverage when you got a little better pass rush. Mm -hmm. You can rush the passer a little better when you have tighter coverage, right? And you're trying to force the quarterback to have to hold that ball a little longer, uh, and that allows guys to get home and and affect the quarterback, which is ultimately our goal. And two. Um, we need to erase the big plays, especially in the run game. You know, too many times, you know, the ball may spit the, the, the line of scrimmage. We got to get them on the ground. And it's okay if it's an 8, 10, 12 yard gain. We can reload and you're, we're, getting, we're giving ourselves another chance. Too many times the ball got out, we missed a tackle or two, and it created a really long run. And so uh, I think our open field tackling has is, is, is got to uh, improve from a year ago.